I'm going to quickly show you how you can um, print a map for your tabletop role playing game, maybe Dungeons and Dragons, um, at uh, the correct scale that you can just play with your minis right on the map. Um, so, first, let's find a map. Um, so, I'm going to search wizards.com for a map, make sure we find an image and search tool size large make sure it's a nice high quality lots of pixels um, I like this one right here random map number one uh, looks like you know we're over a thousand pixels both way and that's a lot of data in there so let's just uh, right click save image as um, and I'm just gonna call it DNG one because it's random map one original there we go. We got that downloaded. And then I'm going to go to GIMP. Now, I personally don't use GIMP a whole lot. Um, but since it's free and it's cross platform and it's very powerful and it does exactly what we want very well, I thought I'd show you so you guys can use it um, yourself. So let's go ahead and open that Dungeon 1 original. So, let me explain the problem. Um, most, in, so there's, there's kind of two issues. Um, one is that when you just go to print an image, chances are whatever software you're using is scaling the image down um, or up to you know fit very cleanly on one sheet of paper. So we need to, to stop it from doing that, but still, we now need to know, well, what scales should we print the image at to make sure that one of those squares is one inch. Um, most images online uh, are optimized around 72 pixels per inch, um, unless they're photographs since taken with the camera. Sometimes they're up around 300 or even 600 if they come out of scanners. Um, but so they understand that that's just metadata, that's just information. Like an, an image is just pixels, just dots of different colors. Um, and how many that we would like to be represented in one inch of physical media is just metadata. Um, but the default tends to be, especially for web-based images, 72. Um, but the question is, is that right? So let's zoom in here, Windows, nope, view. Uh, look, I can zoom in that by going down here. Let's go to like 200%, get nice and tight in here. So over here in your toolbox, select just your, your rectangle selection tool, top left there. Um, and then just select one of the tiles. Oh, if you hold shift, it'll make sure it stays a square. And then just go and grab a tile. Don't grab all of the grout because half the grout belongs to the tile next to it, right? Um, if you look here in the tool options, it says the size is 53 by 53. Um, what I could do if I wanted to is I could get in a lot closer make sure I've got like half of that grout or another way to do it is get all of the grout on uh, two of the sides and none of the grout on these sides 53 by 53 um, or 54 by 54 doesn't really matter it looks like it will go 53 by 53 so one tile is 53 pixels wide. So if um, the images, let's go to the image scale image. Look, it says 72 pixel per inch. Um, this other print size is just the exact same image uh, information we just looked at, just presented in a slightly different way. But again, 72 pixels per inch. So that means that for every inch of paper, assuming you print at a 100% scale, or 72, 
every inch will contain that much information that square is too small for our mini. So it's super easy. You go to image, scale image. Now notice the image size in pixels, 1050 by 1350. Uh, if we change that to 53, the pixels don't change, which is really important to me. Um, yeah, see, they're still the same numbers. So what this did is it didn't stretch the image. Now in that dialog, if you change uh, different uh, different values, it will actually stretch or shrink the image. But because we just changed um, uh, pixels per inch, it didn't actually change any pixels. Um, it preserved all the data as it was, and it just changed metadata around how many of those pixels we'd like to be represented in each inch of physical media. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export as. Now I like to keep a um, uh, we'll do a three. I like to keep a JPEG uh, copy, an image copy. Um, might as well be full quality. Export. There we are. Now the question is, um, you know, if you would have noticed here, print size at 53 pixels per inch, that's way too big to fit on a single piece of paper. Lots of people have lots of creative ways to take an image and um, split it across um, multiple pages. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So when I go to print it, it's it's scaling it down 40%. Like, no, we've tried hard. Let's print it at 100%. Well, I'm not getting the whole thing, and it's not spanning it across multiple pages. Um, if you import this image into Excel, Excel will like um, print multiple sheets. Um, there's software that uh, is specifically for taking a large image and cutting it across multiple sheets. Um, the way that I like to do it the best is Adobe Acrobat Reader, which is free. Most of you probably already have it on your machine. It will do that, but it only opens PDFs. Um, so back in GIMP, um, go back to GIMP, do export as again, and change the extension to PDF. And it'll export the entire image at the settings we had it as a PDF. Now what we do, we see our new PDF there. We're going to open that in Acrobat Reader, File, Print, select the Poster option, and you'll notice it's showing that, oh look, I can print across four sheets and, uh, and get your entire image, which sounds about right. I'm sorry, I can't see those. It's, it's, it's eight pages. Um, so that's a pretty big map. That's great. That's cool. It'll be fun for your players to play on. Um, so let's go through the exercise one more time with um, Lost Minds of Fandelver map. The Red Brand Hideout is where my players are currently. Um, so let's make sure we get a lot of pixels. So search tool size large. Make sure the one that we have is the one from the book. And yeah, that's over a thousand pixels on both sides. That looks great. So I'll right click and save image as, and we'll say hideout original. I'm going to do something on this one to prove to you that it's actually working. So back over here in GIMP, we're going to open hideout original. We're going to confirm that the image size is 72 pixels per inch. So um, although I like to usually save a JPEG copy to just cut to the chase, we're going to go um, straight to the PDF copy. 72 DPI, dots per inch or 
you can do PPI, pixels, print, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to save the 72 just to show you that it's working, and then we will scale the image. Um, um, I realize that I didn't show you why I think it's 53 or 54 is what we looked on the last one. Uh, this is a new map, so let's just double check, make sure. Um, we'll go over here, 54 by 54. So now you can go to print size or scale image. They both do the same thing. Oh, this one seems to add ones. Okay, so change it to 54 pixels per inch. Uh, just to show you, it's changed over here too. Um, so now that's 54, let's do export as. Um, so I pulled out. Um, sorry, I'm going jump ahead of myself. So here's our hideout. So I exported the original one before scaling, changing the resolution 72, and then the scaled one to show you that it's actually working. Um, so here's the 72 one, and when I go in a uh, Acrobat Reader, print it as a poster, that takes six pages. But on my 54 one, file, print, poster, it takes uh, nine pages. So uh, it takes more pages because the image is larger. Those tiles are scaled up. And each of those tiles will be uh, one inch by one inch. Um, hopefully this helps you. Um, a little tip, what I like to do actually is um, not print it out on multiple sheets like this, but what I'll do is I'll extract one or two rooms at a time as their own image. Um, and each of those images typically print on a single sheet just fine. And then as we're going through the dungeon, I reveal to them, you know, one or two rooms at a time, almost kind of fog of war style. Um, but not everybody likes to do that. Lots of people like to see the entire, the entire dungeon. Um, also, I'm sure that you're familiar you know, these maps here show all the secret doors and traps and stuff like that. You can look online. Some people have produced um, cleaner versions um, that don't show some of the Dungeon Master information on it. Um, or you could clean that up, uh, up yourself with a little bit of practice and some tutorials online. So good luck and happy Dungeoneering.